Hi everyone, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction on how to use uh, the Collab Notebooks. So this is uh, basically a web-based version of Python that we can use uh, that Google supports. Uh, so it makes it easier, we don't have to install any software on, uh, on your local laptops and you can just access it through your web browser. So the website is collab.research.google.com um, right up here. Uh, for the most part in lab, we will actually give you uh, a link to a specific notebook and you're just going to edit it. But I would just want to show you the basics of how this works. So I am going to open a new notebook here. And it's taking its time. Okay. So um, each thing that each kind of line that it opens here is a cell. And, um, and so you can actually and right now we're in a cell that's going to let me do um, Python code, and I could also add a cell below that would let me do text. So this is a text. Okay. Um, all right, and then we can actually move that up. So we can add comments to before we type any code, which is nice, and kind of make it clear to your instructor and to other people what it is that you're doing in your code. So the first thing we want to do, uh, another nice thing actually in the, before we go on in this, is that you can make um, the font a little bigger. This is actually doing some HTML coding. Let's say if we do two uh, hashtags, and then we say we're going to import uh, here. It's kind of the first thing that you do in a Python code is import the libraries that we're going to need. And two that we will be working with a lot is uh, NumPy. So we're going to import NumPy or NumPy as NP. And then we need a plotting library as well. So we're going to use matplotlib. So from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. And those are two lines that we pretty much will always be putting at the beginning of the code. Okay, so now if I want to run this code, uh, I do shift return. Or you can hit the play button. That's another way to do it too, right? And that will execute the code. Okay, so I'm going to go back up here and add text so we have uh, can follow what's happening here. Uh, again, I'll do my two hashtags. So the next thing I want to show you is how to redefine a variable. So some languages you need to tell tell it if it's a floating point or an integer or whatever. Python it doesn't uh, require you to define that ahead of time. So I can say um, uh, let's see, a equals five, and I can say b equals ten. Okay, and now if I just want to check what those values are, I can use the print command. So we just do print, uh, and automatically it's going to put this in parentheses for us. And I can just say a comma b, and it will print out both of those values. So right now it's keeping them as a uh, an integer. So now if I put a, a decimal place on my 10, let's see what happens. So I have that, and now if I print again, so it keeps it, it knows that it's a floating point number now, not an integer. Okay, so let's do, um, again, we'll add a text here, and let's see how we find an array. So this is uh, an array. You can think of it in its most basic sense as a collection of numbers. So in lab, we are going to have an array of x values, an array of y values, whatever that we might want to plot against each other or do some statistics on. Um, OK, so let's just say, just to be um, very traditional, I'm going to make my x array. OK. so. I'll say I'll define it as x, and then I use np.array. Okay. And, uh, and this is nice, actually. You can see that it actually pops up uh, help for you, right? If you need it, I'll show you another way to access help. Um, OK, so we're going to put our numbers in brackets, and we're going to, um, oops, we are going to, sorry, the garbage truck's going by right now. We're going to uh, separate individual values but just by a comma. So I'm going to make this array just one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now my y array might be 
something I'm going to enter data in as well. Uh, I don't know. Let's make something up. Four. Maybe these are really like our measured values. Two, three, four, five, one more I need. Um, all right, so we have these two arrays defined now. Again, I could, I could print them if I want. I could print X and then I can print Y. That. Okay, and then um, all right, so then one thing we're going to be doing a lot of is trying to make a uh, plot so we can visualize our data. So let's make a plot. Okay. So we want to use, um, like I said, here we imported our plotting uh, library as PLT. So we are going to do plt.plot, uh, sorry, figure. It's the first thing we'll do. That opens a new figure. Plt plot uh, and this is nice too because it tells you everything that you can um, access within plot and you can scroll down here too and get the full help uh, which is great so in particular right so here's an example right i can plot x1 y1 and this part here is telling it to use blue circles to plot and that's kind of a useful thing let's see if we can find that in the help file where it will tell us what the different plot options are Yeah, so here, uh, this, is a, well, this is a dotted line format, but um, so here are the colors, right, that are standard, blue, green, red, blah, 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 uh, and that's the end. And then you can have point markers here. So a dot is a point, uh, whatever. And we were using um, a circle, there's a dot, triangle, up triangle, all these different things. So you can just kind of scroll through here and see what the different uh, versions are that you can use to plot the data. Okay, so let's be kind of boring. I'm going to plot X comma Y. Or maybe it will be exciting. I don't know. Maybe we'll make it a cyan star. Let's see what that looks like. Ta-da! Okay. So um, what we want to do now is uh, actually put some uh, context on the plot so, so people can understand what it is, right? So every good plot should have its X label. So that's just plt.x label. And we put whatever we want for X label to be in quotes. Um, so for example, maybe this is time in seconds. Okay, so when I'm just doing shift enter there to run it. Okay, and that's a little bit small for my uh, old eye. So I'm gonna change the font size, let's say to, let's try what 14 looks like. And again, in the help file, right, you can look for all the, uh, well, it's actually just telling me what the, just about the font, but you can look for what all the different options are within plot. All right, that's better, but I might go even bigger. Okay, and then um, we can label our Y axis and let's say it's distance meters of course again we'll make our font size equal 16 so that looks good and now these I like my cyan stars but they're a little bit small so um, let's see if we can make those bigger so we can go back up to the plot command and we can say uh, marker size equals 10 quite a lot bigger and we can even go a little more maybe 14 Okay, so another nice thing you can put in here when you're plotting something is actually put a label in. So let's say this is uh, trial one. And then if I go down here and say plt.legend, again, that comes up. What happens if I just click on it? Oh, okay. Um, and then I can do shift enter again. I'll have a legend. So, so these are elements that should be in uh, in your plots. And then we can also have plt.title. Uh, and let's say it's distance versus time. 
for the buggy of the first lab that we'll do. And I'm guessing the font will be too small, but let's see what we get. Yeah, so let's make that a little bit bigger. We can make it the same as 16. There we go. Okay, great. And then if we want to save that figure, we can say PLT. Well, you be, actually, you're going to be just submitting the um, notebook, so you don't need to do that. But just in case for future reference, or if you're running this locally, uh, say, oops, save fig. And we can just give it a plot name. So my first plot. And I'm going to end it with a PNG. And then uh, MATLAB will look at whatever it is that you're ending it with and save the plot in the right format. Now, I'm not 100% sure where that plot actually got saved in the, on my Google Drive, but it'll be there somewhere. OK, and then so another way that you can get help. Um, so let's say you forgot how to, what all the variations of the plot commands are. You can just do help and then put the command in brackets. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's PLT, that plot. It's a good point. So here it said my error was a name error saying that the um, plot is not defined, which is true. It's plt.plot. So do that. And then you can kind of get the help all uh, laid out for you as well in the cell. Now, if this ends up being too big and you don't really want to um, see it, you know, you could always get rid of the output and, and or get rid of the whole cell. OK, so um, one common thing that may happen. So let's say, for example, I forgot to enter my last data point. Okay, so now my X array has six and my Y array has only five. OK, I don't need to print it again, but let's see what happens when I try and make my figure. OK, so you see all this scary stuff. It's an error, blah, blah, blah. Usually you want to scooch down to the bottom, and this is the most informative error that it has. So x and y must have the same first dimensions, but have shapes 6 and 5. OK, so the shape is just how, how long. These are only one-dimensional arrays, so it's just saying how long the array is. So that's your hint, right, that you missed a data point in this uh, y array. So we go back up here. We'll fix that again. It. There we go. And then um, one thing also we should do is rename this, right? So it's something not just I untitled. So let's call this first. Python. I'm just going to use that underscore there. Okay, and if I just click out of that box, it saves, and there you go, you got your first plot. And you've used uh, the Colab notebook. So let's call that a day. <laughs>